Now, if you are only familiar with the name Jacqueline Cochran because of this sign outside the airport, then there's something you should know. Her contributions to the field of aviation, as well as the American war effort, is the stuff of legends. And she is a proud part of our desert past. She was the first female to fly fast, faster than the speed of sound. Um, and again, she uh, flew probably 60 different types of aircraft during her career. On May 11, 1906, Jacqueline Cochran was born in Pensacola, Florida, under the name Bessie Mae Pittman. She was the youngest of five children, and they were very poor, but as Jacqueline used to say, they didn't know it. At the age of eight, in her own words, she is described as being farmed out to family members and friends because her parents really didn't want her around. It was at this early age when she developed her work ethic. By the age of 11, she was working in a mill. At the age of 14, she began to work for a hairdresser. Around this time, she met and married Robert Cochran. And within a year, they had a young son. However, Robert Jr. did not live past three years. And after he died, their marriage did not survive. She started working in beauty parlors, sweeping the floor, being the shampoo girl. And it was at that time that she decided to change her first name to Jacqueline, Jackie Cochran. Jackie wouldn't be sweeping floors for long. As a newly trained beautician, she moved to New York City, where she began to pursue other interests. She became fully trained and was very, very interested in cosmetics. So she began to dabble in the development of her own cosmetic line. Before long, she was working in New York City at Saks Fifth Avenue. And that was when she met Floyd Odlum at the cosmetic counter. Floyd Odlum was a lawyer and American industrialist who, during this time, was one of the 10 wealthiest men in the United States. Floyd took an interest in Jacqueline and encouraged her to begin her own cosmetic line. It was Floyd Odlum who convinced Jackie that she should become a pilot. He convinced her that flying her cosmetics from town to town would be a brilliant marketing ploy. So, in the summer of 1932, Jackie Cochran began air training at Roosevelt Field in Long Island. Floyd believed this process would take six weeks. He was wrong. On a dare, she got her pilot's license in three weeks, and she went on to become, again, one of the most famous women aviators in the world. Her fame was well warranted. In 1937, she was the only woman to compete in the famed Bendex Air Race, and worked with her good friend Amelia Earhart to open the race to all women. A year later, she would win the Bendex and set a new transcontinental speed record. She was the first woman to fly a bomber across the Atlantic. Jackie Cochran was considered to be the best female pilot in the United States. She uh, raced in the Cleveland Air Races. She raced at Reno. Um, she was very, very successful. And again, she flew a number of experimental aircraft. Um, she would get in anything that had wings and an engine and try it out. Jackie Cochran married Floyd Odlum in 1936. Soon after, they experienced a flat tire while driving through the Coachella Valley and discovered the desert community of Indio. They fell so much in love with the land that they decided to stay and built a 732-acre ranch there. Many notables came to visit here. It just changed the whole image of Indio. You had John and David Rockefeller, Gloria Swanson, Walt Disney, Bob and Dolores Hope were very close friends. President Eisenhower visited her ranch many times during his presidency, and then afterwards, he spent time at the Cochrane Ranch here in Indio, working on his memoirs. When the United States entered World War II, Jackie was confronted with a new set of challenges. Being an experienced aviator, not only was she willing to serve her country, she was willing to train others to do the same. What she was proposing was a program that she had witnessed when she had gone to England um, in the 1939 and 1940 era uh, before we got involved in the war. And she observed a program over there where they had trained women uh, to fly and relieve some of the men uh, uh, from the ferry, what we call the ferry command, moving airplanes around uh, in England 
so that the uh, men could fly the, the bombing and fighter missions. Jackie was able to convince the military to allow her to set up a training program for women in Sweetwater, Texas. That was how the Women's Air Force Service Pilots, or WASP, program was born. So a call went out to able-bodied young women from across the country who wanted to fly. One of those women was Ms. Peggy Parker of Portland, Oregon. Peggy received a recruitment letter signed by Jackie, which is on display at the Palm Springs Air Museum. It reads as follows. You are tentatively assigned to enter training on the 4th of October, 1943. When your papers are in order and you have successfully passed your medical examination, you will receive official instructions when and where to report. Yours very truly, Jacqueline Cochran, Director of Women Pilots. She trained over 1,100 women uh, pilots to fly fighters and bombers. The ladies would ferry the aircraft from their point of production to where they would be needed. They would also transport much needed cargo. I'm very happy that we've trained a thousand women to fly the Army way. I think it is going to mean more to aviation than anyone realizes. The WASP period of operation was from August 1943 to December 1944. During that time, they had flown over 60 million miles, freeing up the male pilots to fly combat missions as well as other duties. Out of the 1,100 pilots trained, 38 lost their lives, and one, Gertrude Tompkins, disappeared while on a ferry mission, never to be seen again. The Women's Air Service pilots uh, have gone down in history as one of the great uh, moves in the military that allowed uh, many, many, many pilots to go into combat and probably shorten the war, particularly in Europe, by, by months. The war would eventually end, but Jackie was not through exploring the skies. She continued to set numerous records, and on May 18, 1953, with the encouragement of her lifelong friend Chuck Yeager, Jackie Cochran became the first woman to break the sound barrier. It was one of those efforts that would, would promote women as competent pilots, and it was just something she felt it was necessary to do to prove that they had the same ability as men. Two, one, liftoff. We have a liftoff. And when America shot for the moon, Base here. The Eagle has landed. it was Jackie Cochran who helped us get there. NASA was more than happy to benefit from her expertise. Uh, having flown faster than the speed of sound, she knew about the G-forces and all of those kinds of things, the stresses on the individual, and she was very instrumental in helping the early astronauts train for that, that kind of experience. Of course, the inclusion of female astronauts in the space program did not exist during that time, but it was a cause that Jackie championed. I do think today's female astronauts stand on her shoulders because she was a pioneer for women in aviation. Jacqueline Cochran died on August 9, 1980, at her home in Indio. The thermal airport which she regularly utilized throughout her career was renamed the Jacqueline Cochran Regional Airport in her honor. On July 1, 2009, President Barack Obama and the United States Congress awarded to the WASP the Congressional Gold Medal. Three of the WASP, out of what were at the time approximately 300 members, were on hand to witness the event. This was the legacy of Jacqueline Cochran, an American institution and a proud part of our desert past. Steve Sumrall, NBC Palm Springs.